Hello, this is Amy with Amy Astro. Thank you for watching my videos. If you like this video, please subscribe below and select the alert bell so you know when I upload new Astro videos. Like and share with your Astro friends and you can find me on Facebook as Amy Astro where I share my Astro related adventures. Welcome back. We are continuing with our Crab Nebula edit from our one shot color camera. This is part two of what has turned into a four part series. I was trying to give you all a chance to absorb everything and not keep you attached to the computer for too long. So we will continue with part two, starting exactly where part one left off. And please stay tuned for part three and part four, where I will finish this all the way through Photoshop and Lightroom. All right, now that we have integrated our image, it is time for us to apply the drizzle integration. So we're gonna open up drizzle integration and we're gonna add our files. And we're gonna go back to our directory that had the approved and registered images. And we're gonna grab all the ones that end with XDRZ for drizzle. And we'll say open. And then we'll go back and we'll add our local normalized files. They're in the same directory, but they're they're suffixed with a XNML. And the program knows, so they already have them pre-highlighted for you to grab. And we'll say open. And if you look through this list, all of our images now have an N next to them, which means they have a normalized file associated with them. And we will leave all of this the same as default, and we will say run. Now this process will take approximately 30 minutes to run, so uh, go get yourself a bite to eat. All right, our process is finished running. Let's go ahead and minimize the window here. And this is what the drizzle looks like when it first shows up on your screen. Let's get, uh, unstretch it, and let's restretch it and get a better look at it. There we go, and you can see all of these little uh, impurities that have gotten cleaned out of these images. And every little bit does help. So I'm gonna throw away this file and let's take a look at our finished file here. There we go. So I mean, on the, you know, the, the high level here, it looks about the same, but if you zoomed in, you probably noticed some subtle differences. But now this is gonna be our image that we are gonna continue working with. So we have all of our images. They have been calibrated, debared, approved, registered. And you see a giant green blob. But really what this is, is this is light pollution. There's a layer over the top of this that we just really have to peel it back. And the best way to peel it back is using the automatic background extractor. Okay, so let's go here. And our correction, let's try division. And you know what, I'm gonna do this twice. Let me show you a really cool trick here. Push this over. If I take my mouse and hover over the word integration, click, hold, and drag them out here, I am making a duplicate copy of this image. And see it has the word clone in it. I want to run one image at division and the other one at subtraction, and let's just compare them. All right, let's hold this one over here. Let's change the description so I remember what I did division. Okay, so he has been divided. I'm going to go ahead and uh, discard the background model. I don't want to see it. I'm going to replace this image just to make life a little bit easier on my screen. And I'm going to gra grab the new instance and drop it on top of the image and let it run. And it should peel off this green and leave me with a better looking image. Okay, that doesn't look good, but let's unstretch it and restretch it and give it another chance. Not too bad. Still, once I do color calibration, it might be better. All right, so that was division. Let's look at this image and identify her. Let's call it subtraction. Yeah, 
let's make them bigger. All right, subtraction. We're going to change our correction to subtraction, and everything else is the same. New instance, and drop them. This is just curiosity. And that's really what you have to do with your images. You have to try different things to see what works for you. All right, let's unstretch him and let's restretch him, give him a better chance. Okay, I'm going to minimize that. Now let's compare what looks better. Now this image definitely looks better as far as color tone. It doesn't have that red overcast to it. Uh, it peeled away stuff here, so it's showing more of a gradient to it. Let's look at this other corner compare. These are about the same. So, which is better? That's a really tough call. I almost feel that the subtraction worked better for this image. But let's take both of them to just one more step, just to be sure. I'm going to zoom in and get over here where I've got no stars. And let's create a new preview window right here. Interesting, as you see this little banding going on, that's different. Okay, I have my small preview that we're going to use for our background. Now let's zoom out, and our other preview window is going to be on just the good stuff in the image. Remember last time we did it, we had a whole nebula, so basically it was the whole image is considered the good stuff. Right now it's going to be just the crab nebula himself. So let's go to background neutralization. I don't know why they keep zipping over there. Our target reference, I'm going to turn off the main view so it doesn't get as confusing. Just include my previews. And I want preview 1 to be my reference for my background. My, that's where my background is. And let's run it. All right, it introduced a little bit more red, but that's its idea of, of color balancing. And let's go to color calibration. And our reference image for our white balance is going to be our preview two, which was the crab himself. I'll leave structure detection on, and our background was our preview one. Okay, see, if I didn't uncheck the, um, include main view, I got a whole list. Too much to weed through. So let's go back here and grab our preview. Oh, I need preview one, my background. There we go. Preview one, preview two. Let's run it and see what it looks like with the color balance on it. All right, let's unstretch it, restretch it. Okay, that's what it felt like our color balance is going to be. All right. We've still got a lot of work to do on this image, but for right now, let's delete all of our previews. Okay, this was our subtraction. Let's minimize him. And let's think about what the division one was. And we're gonna look and just compare and determine which process worked better for this situation. All right, let's draw a preview window of the background stuff. And let's zoom out just a little bit and make another preview of just the crab himself. Okay, let's go back to our background neutralization. Let's uncheck the main views. I only want to see the previews. We want preview one on the division image. That's our background. And let's run it. Interesting, it made it redder. And let's do color calibration. Let's uncheck the main views, leave the previews. And this will be number two. Our white balance, our white reference is going to be the crab. And our background reference is going to be that number one. And OK. And let's run. And from here, we're just going to pick which of these two images we like the best to move on to the next step. I'm not going to keep doing both of them. All right, let's delete all previews. Okay. 
Which one do we feel is now stronger? They are both very similar, which is unusual. It's not exactly what I expected. They both have this banding right through here. This banding, which possibly came from the camera, it could have been something in my light train that a flat would have fixed. And you can see now where that amp glow is, there's kind of this gradient going on on both of them. But the difference between division and subtraction, while they looked drastically different prior to color calibrating, they look about the same right now. I mean, I've got, he's a little brighter over here and here. I think I'm going to stick with division and just keep working with that one. So I'm just going to push this off to the side. These are ultimately probably going to be my deleted files. But now let's look at, this is our combined image. This is our original image. We all have to agree that overall they look better. This one's got a lot of noise, but we're about to address that and we won't even notice it. The stars don't really look that bad. There's those stars there. Minor bloat to them, but my focus isn't that horrible. I've got some great veins going on in here. So now I'm going to close my original image. I'm done looking with him. We're moving on. Let's start working with this one. Now what we need to start looking at now is our noise. It is time to start cleaning that up. All right, so now let's take a look at, we need to change our color working space. There's something different that I don't typically do. And we want to take the red to one. Let's take my view. And we're working on Mr. Division. All right, let's take that to one and to one and to one. Okay? And apply global. My working space is now color, all set to one. And we need to do a channel extraction to start addressing this noise issue that we've got going on here. Let's go to the CIE L with A and the B. L for the luminance. Now let's uncheck A and uncheck B. I just want the luminance off this image. And let's run it. And I should get a grayscale image that's considered my luminance. And there he is. Oh, he's ugly. I really wonder what all that banding is. Okay, but moving on. I can't fix that now. Alright, so now we've got our luminance image here, but I can't apply this as a mask to this image until I stretch it. Because you see, when I take the stretch off, it's a black image. So if I made it a mask, it would only pick up these very bright spots. So let's go to our screen transfer function, and let's open our histogram transformation. Alright, so what I need to do is hit this little radioactive button. And that's what the stretch would look like. And I'm going to grab a new instance of that stretch, drag it all the way over to the line down at the bottom of the histogram transformation, and I am going to let go. Now let's reset our screen transfer. So it's black, and I'm going to minimize him. And let's just say run. And now this is permanently stretched, and we can work with it. So I'm going to highlight my image, go to mask, select mask, and let's find our division under bar L for luminance and invert our mask and say OK. Now let's do a control or command K and just take a look at our mask. OK? And let me verify our mask is inverted. So it's going to go after the noise at this point. So whatever is black is what it's going to start working on. And whatever is this deep red, it's not going to work on. So if you look at this main image, we are going after everything that's in between our actual stars. All right, so let's shrink this up. And I'm going to just going to turn this off just with the Command K. And we're going to zoom in. And I just want to watch this process. And we're going to compare before and after what it looks like. All right, to deal with the noise, we need to go to Multi-Scale 
linear transformation. Say that three times real fast. All right. And let's come up with the numbers here. We want to do noise reduction. And we're going to do noise reduction on four layers at different amounts. So we're going to start our first layer up here, the threshold, and let's make it about four. And our amount, let's make it all half. And I can type these numbers in if I want. And let's run it through three times, three iterations. Now the second layer that it's going to work on, we'll do it slightly less. We'll do this at two for a threshold. The amount will be half. All right, and my iterations will be two. The third, oops, I shrunk him, wake up. The third will also be you moving down to one. Amount will be half, and my iterations will be two. And the final layer, we're gonna have a threshold of half. An amount of half, and my iterations will be one. So these are my parameters that I'm gonna work on. And our target is gonna be our RGB component. So let's hit apply, and let's watch this noise and see what happens. All right, so that's finished processing. Let's minimize this, and let's look at our before and after. All right, here's our before. And here is our after. So you can see it is a great improvement. Let's zoom all the way out. Because when we do a before and after, we can actually see some change right now. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to permanently stretch this image. And what we're going to do that with is our screen transfer function and our histogram transformation. So we'll start with this image as unstretched. And we will use the screen transfer function, little radioactive button, and stretch the image. All right, that looks pretty rough, but we'll see what we can do with that. And we'll take the new instance and drag and drop it over here to the histogram transformation. Let's reset the screen transfer so it goes black again and minimize. And now I can do a live view and I have the option right now to change the stretch if I don't really like it. And let's see, will it let me grab it? Okay, so let's find, there's our division. This is what it looks like on the graph. And I can take this graph and change the X axis, which spreads out our histogram curve so we can see it. Right now the y-axis is at 3, so I'll scroll down, and now we can see some of our curve. If we want to see even more, we just bump it up more. And we can see more at the bottom, and we can change our x-axis and stretch it out. We're not modifying the curve, we're just changing how it looks so we can see where things start to change. Okay, so we've got our darks are sitting here, our lights. That's probably our midtones. Oh, there. Our lights are all the way over here. And there's our dark and our midtone. Now, this does seem kind of extreme. I'm going to see what happens if I take, oops, take the dark and stretch it over some. Let's see. They appear. There we go. Let's darken this up just a little bit. That's our midtones. And here's our dark. See, they're kind of anchored together here. So if we want to take our darks back down, we have to move our midtones back up. There we go. So now it's not quite as crazy as what it was before. You know, I still want to have that detail in the nebula, but I don't want to see all that craziness on the outside. And we've already determined we're going to have to crop this image just to get rid of these corners, but that's okay. It's a small target, so you've got room to crop. All right. 
let's just leave it right there for right now and we will run now as this runs this histogram is now applied to our preview so it really blows it out but if I undo the preview there it is as normal so I'm going to close preview and close the histogram transformation now this image is non-linear so there is no need to stretch this image anymore and it's a very good spot to take a moment and do a save as to this image and save it as non-linear so if you have some goofs later on down the road you have the opportunity to come back to this spot and change your mind all right so while this is saving the next thing we'll want to do is we'll start working on noise again at another level. We will go back to our, well we need to make a luminance copy so we need a channel extraction and once again use the C-I-E-L and the luminance and let's run it. Alright, here is my luminance. He's already stretched so we don't have to do that to it. But what I do need to do is exaggerate it some. So let's go to our histogram transformation. Let's give it a reset. Reset. Okay. Let's go to our division L. Oh, I see what it is. My Y axis. Let's bring it down to one. Now that it's stretched, it all fits on the whole screen. And what I want to do, I'm just going to do live view this time so you can see what it does. I want to clip the highlights. Well, right here is clip the shadows. And the bottom one is I'm going to clip the highlights. And that exaggerates it so we can go after our noise. And let's run it. Let's do a reset because we don't want to run it twice. Turn live view off. Minimize. And close this preview button. This is my new mask. So we can remember we can go up here to our mask and select a mask but let's try this other method which is really easy and let's grab our mask itself until it gets to an arrow click let's drag it over here onto our image and you see how i've got that little square there by my arrow and i let go and now the mask is applied to this image. I'm going to do a control or command K and you can see there's my mask but I need to invert this mask because I want to go after the background not after my stars and nebula. So we go up here to mask and we can invert or we have a shortcut key here and we can do the shift command I. So let's give that a try. Shift Command I and I'm going to do Control K and that did it. Sure did. Shift Command I takes it the other way and Shift Command I inverts it. So now we are protecting our stars, we're protecting our nebula. Alright, I'm going to do a Control K and turn that off. Whoa, crazy mouse, crazy mouse. Let's uh, zoom out just a little bit. Now let's zoom in on the background some. That's the wrong way. That happens. All right, I just wanna see what we attack with our next noise reduction step. Let's go to our multi-scale linear transformation. Nope, transform. And it remembers what we did last time and we're gonna repeat it, but a little less. So let's take our threshold on the first level to three. And let's drop our iterations to two. Let's go to the second layer and it will stay the same. Let's go to our third and the iterations will drop it down to one and the last one will stay the same. And we are still going after our RGB. So let's run this and we'll be back in just a second. All right, it is done running. Let's undo it and just see what it did. This is before. Let's zoom in a little bit more so you can really see. There's before, and here's after. Before and after. All right, let's do a full zoom out. 
and we'll do a before and after and you really can't tell at this high level. I'm going to shrink this up but there's our noise reduction and it looks much better. All right, with our mask still attached, see we've got it here, it's still inverted and the mask is enabled. We're gonna do one more step for noise reduction and that is the A, C, D, and R. All right, so we're gonna change the, um, the settings just a little bit. We're gonna take the standard deviation up to two and the amount down to 0.75 and everything else will stay as the default. And let's run it. All right, now that that has finished running, let's zoom in some and let's compare befores and afters. All right, here's before. You can see that it's very subtle here. This is before and this is after. You have before and you have after so it's definitely smoothing out a little bit more buttery all right so let's zoom all the way out minimize that and now I am done with this mask so let's remove it and the mask we don't need it so let's delete it so we don't get confused with anything else all right so there's my image right now now, right now, sometimes is when you should take another look at your dark point. So to do that, I'm gonna open up my histogram transformation. I'll give it a reset. And let's go to my division image so I can see what it looks like. Now notice my dark is all the way over here on the curve. It's not even really touching the curve anymore. So I'm gonna zoom in so I can see where my curve starts. Gives me a little bit better idea. So it looks like he could be, but not really on the red. It's kind of like he's got a little hiccup in there. Let's zoom in so we can see that better. All right. So here is my curve on my dark side. Let's do a live view of my image. And let's just drag the dark over ever so slightly to make it darker. You don't want to get carried away because you'll end up with something like this. You just want to be gentle about all of these settings. We can always go darker later. Alright, so I think that's too far. I'm going to bring it about right there. And I can make this darker later. Alright, let's turn that off. Let's see what before looks like. And that's where we're going after. And I don't think I'm looking at the edges here and I'm making sure that I didn't lose any detail. So there's before and there's after. It still looks pretty good. So I'm going to say run it. I'm going to close the live view, give this a reset. I'm going to take this back to one so I don't have to worry about him later. And minimize him. So this is my image now. Now we need to start looking at bringing out some of our details. And we're gonna do that with more masks. I need to work on the background and get the background darker while keeping the nebula lighter. And I don't wanna affect any of the stars. So let's start with a range mask. Let's go to process, mask generation, and let's create a range mask. And we'll make it a live view. And we're going to take this lower limit option and we're going to slide it up. And what we want to do is get the interesting stuff white and the background black. I notice that that is still messing with me some. And I'm getting tired of looking at that. Let's hold off on doing that. Let's do a reset and minimize that and close this. Close. Let's give, let's crop. All right, I am tired of looking at those edges. Let's go to process, geometry, dynamic crop. And the first thing you do to get dynamic crop to run is you give it a reset. It gives you these edges and you move your cursor till you have a nub on each corner and you can just bring it in. All right, 
I just want to get out of where all that craziness of the colors are going with the camera added to it. I got to keep in mind that I am running in within city limits, so I am not in a dark spot whatsoever. All right, let's crop it just a little bit more. You see, I can grab it right here. You see this very faint, that's the center. And I can move there. Now you can see the center button. I'm gonna put that right in the middle of the crab. That's what my crop's gonna be. I'm gonna give it a check and say execute it. And let's forget about that craziness on the edges now. Let's reset, close. Yes, I'm gonna turn off the active selection. Here is my image now. Okay, let's roll forward. Nice clean edges. Live view with our range selection. All right, and let's slide this up. And remember, I want to keep the interesting white and the background black. So I'm going to go just, look at that, it's still grabbing some of that white there. I could crop more if I wanted to. But I'm going to go to about right here, because I don't want to grab that white. And we want to make our mask fuzzy, so we have a nice tapered gradient edge, and we're going to smooth it out just a little bit, okay? And this is all personal preference. You just play with these numbers until you find something that works for you. But I want to make sure that I've got a nice tapered edge on this. Okay, let's execute this. All right, we can close this process, close our live view. All right, and this is my new mask. And it looks pretty reasonable. So let's shrink him down on the range mask. This is when you wanna keep, don't delete him. All right, let's add our mask. Mask, select mask. And we want a range mask and we're going to invert it and say OK. Let's do our Control K. And right now, so what we are protecting is our nebula and we are protecting our stars. We are working on the background. And what we want to do with the background is we're going to work on getting rid of some of these stray colors that we may see in the background and we're going to neutralize it more. So let's go to our multi-scale linear transformation and let's reset it and now we're talking about color we are going to remove the color in our background so let's add eight layers and we're going to start on layer five and this is where we start working with the detail layer of the bias and we want to neutralize the background so we're going to slide it over and take it to negative one and negative one is all you can do and we're going to do this all the way to layer number eight all right, so those are eight. But now we're not wanting to deal with the RGB component. We are wanting to deal with the chromians component of this image. And hopefully that will help neutralize things. So let's run this and see what it looks like. All right, that process is done. Let's zoom in a little bit more and let's undo it. All right, so that's before and that's after. Now, once again, I really don't see a whole lot going on. Let me minimize this out of my way. Let's see what it did over here. Let's go to before. Okay. I saw something pop in right here. And let's go to after. It just stole some of my nebulosity. So that's telling me I didn't do that great of a job on my mask and I want it back. So how do I get this back? I have to redo my mask. And this is something we do frequently. You have to work with these masks. I mean, right there, it didn't really do anything, but it did something up there at the top that I didn't like. I just want to see where else it's stealing my nebulosity just a touch down there. Let's 
let's zoom out just a little bit on the grand scheme. Do I notice this? Let's get him in the center. Okay, let's, oops, I see. I went undo way, one too many times. And we can do that sometimes. So where am I now? I want to redo the color. So now undo the color. Boy, it's so subtle, so maybe it's not so bad. Not as bad as I thought. Let's give it an undo one more time. And let's give it a redo. You know, now that I look at it from this distance, I lose something here, but it's not enough that I'm going to really worry about. But I could. I could remake that mask and make sure I have more white included and change my feathering and such. Okay, so let's make sure the background is now neutralized. Okay. So what we want to do now is work on the intensity of the background. So let's go to our histogram transformation. Let's give it a reset. We're on the division. This is where I typically will take the midtones. And so you could slide it up. Oops. Live view. Okay, so let's turn the live view on so we can see what's going on. And this is where I would take this midtone and I would slide it up. And you can see how the dark is getting much darker. And you can see where that feathering was on that mask. Let's reset it real quick. This is a gentle move. It's just enough to make the background darker, but don't steal your nebulosity. Let's turn off and on. And see, look at the edges of my nebulosity. It's too much. If my mask was bigger, I could include that. So let's back this down some. And let's turn it on. It still steals my nebulosity. Bottom line is, I just don't like that mask. All right. I said I wasn't going to do it, but guess what? I am going to do it. Let's do our mask. Let's remove our mask. And let's step backwards one. Okay don't like that mask. Let's create a new mask. I'll try again. Not a big deal. Let's do a range selection. All right, let's turn on live view. These are the settings we had before and I didn't have enough of this outer edges protected. So let's, we don't want to go that way. We had it at one six. Let's do this. Let's see, I've also, here's my concern is this corner up here is still affected. So let's see if that makes some of a difference and let's drop the fuzziness down a little bit and see if that helps it. Let's run it. All else fails, you just start over at this back step. We all go through this. Don't think I get these settings right the first time because I never do. This is all part of the process. All right, so this is now range mask one. And range mask one is what I'm going to apply to my image. Select mask. Let's go find him, range mask one, and I'm going to invert him. Command K. All right, that looks better. Let's start back. We need to do our background again. And that's under the multi-scale linear transformation. And if we didn't hit reset, which we didn't, it remembers the settings. So I just hit go. All right, let's close this up. Let's just zoom in just a little bit. Let's do an undo and a redo. Still lost a touch right there. Let's do an undo and a redo. Okay, let's run with it. But if I didn't like it again, I could totally remake this mask again. 
So we have neutralized our background. It is now darker. Now we need to, let's see, we need to go back to our histogram. Histogram. I accidentally closed them a minute ago. Process, intensity transformation, histogram. Okay, so on the division, let's do a live view. There we go, and we take our midtone and we slide up. Let's see, we slide up too far, we get that. Reset. Let's just give it a touch. Let's give it a touch more. And let's toggle the live view off and on. I want a little less. This one, I never move it very far from that line. Move it back just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna run it there. Didn't add a whole lot of darkness to me, but that's okay. Let's minimize. Minimize with authority there. There we go, he turned off and close and close. There's our image. Let's remove our mask, but keep it for later. Do not get rid of it, okay? So let's move our mask over here. So now we've got our image here, and let's start thinking about curves, and let's play with the brightness factor of this image. Let's go to our curves transformation. Let's give it a reset and do a live view. And let's create two dots on this line. And I'm just doing a little left click and a left click. Now let's create a very gentle S curve. See, if I'm not gentle, I get this number. Let's bring it back to the line. We just want down just a little bit. You can see it's taking the darks and making it a little bit darker. And we can take the top and it will make our brights brighter. But gosh, look at what it just did to the inside of that nebula. Wow, crazy stuff. All right, so let's bring it up just a little bit and let's toggle it off and on and see if it makes us happy. I mean, wow, that, look at the veins in there. It's probably a little bit too much. We will get it brighter later, so you don't have to get too carried away. All right, I'm gonna roll with that and let's say run. Okay, let's minimize. And close, close, okay. Here is our image. Let me make sure it ran. Curves transformation. Stay tuned for part three where we pick up where this one just left off and we will continue on with making our star masks. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and select that little alert bell so you know when part three is uploaded. Until next time, this is Amy with Amy Astro wishing you clear skies.